So this video today is about the bond market and the massive move in yields in the 10 year and 30 year that we've seen over the last couple months and what kind of effect those could have on equity markets and well, businesses in general. So I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna ramble a bit today because it's sort of how I talk things through and so I hope you can bear with me on this. But I got to thinking about the sizable move we've seen in 10-year Treasury yields over the last month or so. We've seen basically a 25, 25 basis point jump. And a basis point is um, like 100 basis points equals 1%. So 25 basis points would represent 25% uh, of a 1%, so a quarter of a percent. Yeah, that's it. So here's the thing I've been thinking a lot about is the cost of money and what is that cost of money really attached to? And it's attached to bonds. So if you take out a loan and they say, you know, this loan is you know prime plus two let's say well prime typically is attached to the 10-year treasury or LIBOR um, one of those two and when interest rates are super low like they have been well money's cheap and it doesn't cost you much but let's say you have a loan you're a business owner and the loan is attached to, say, the 10-year treasury, and it's reevaluated every quarter. And let's say you took that loan out, um, I don't know, let's say July of 2020, and uh, I'm, don't quote me on my numbers, but let's say it was, 10-year treasury was at, uh, say, 0 0.60 of a percent uh, yield, and so your loan is, uh, say, prime, uh, prime plus two, and uh, so you're paying 2.6%, but every quarter it adjusts. Well, if it was 2.6, and it was a 10-year treasury of 0.6, today it's attached to a, what, 1 1.9, 1.19, 1.20 yield on the 10-year treasury. That means your cost of that loan, well, it went up a ton since you first took out that loan. And so this to me is a problem because a lot of short term or bond, excuse me, a lot of businesses um, take out loans that are adjustable and when they're adjustable, you know, and yields are low, it's great. But when yields go up, it cuts into cash flow. And what's the one thing that's really businesses are struggling with, especially in the retail and service industries like restaurants? They're challenged with cash flow because of COVID and because we have shut down our economy and we've told people to stay home. We're not going out to eat as much. And, uh, and maybe those restaurant restaurants and the restaurant owners have taken out these loan type of loans and now the loans are costing them more money but their revenues aren't going up to me at some point when the 10-year treasury breaches maybe let's put say 1.25 uh, yield one so one one point one and a quarter yield and once it breaches that, what happens to cash flow for businesses on loans that are readjusted? What happens to those individuals who may have loans that um, readjust on a quarterly or monthly or annual basis? What if you have a, you know, a arm, some sort of a mortgage, you know, five-year arm or three-year arm or something like that, and you're coming into that readjustment period? What happens to those payments? Can you afford them? 
this to me is really troublesome because you know the, the everybody has said the Fed will save us they'll print money they'll buy treasuries and buy them up but what we're seeing is is it's not working anymore and there's only so much the Fed can do they have said they're not gonna raise interest rates for a long 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 time but the market really determines interest rates and if you think about even though the Fed did not raise the federal funds rate the 25 basis point move in the 10-year Treasury is almost like a monetary tightening you know it's like the Fed raising um, the Fed funds rate by a quarter of percent well that causes um, that causes problems and I think this is something that isn't really talked much about because well I mean think about it. the bond market is not sexy whatsoever but it is such a big market and it's actually bigger than the equity market and when you have this this mega move like we've seen over the last 12 24 18 months into treasuries or bonds and people have made money on those bonds because they you know if the yield uh, I think was a year ago was right around two or two and a quarter got as low as you know point five four or a little less than that I believe um, that means they made money in those bonds well today they're losing money in those bonds I mean look at your uh, intermediate bond funds or your long-term corporate bond funds they're losing money and they're losing money because the Fed wants us out of by keeping rates so low it pushes out pushes us out into riskier assets and by having riskier assets it drives the equity markets up well as you can have seen in the last what September when really the fang stocks uh, sort of topped out they have been struggling and if you look at the 10-year Treasury and fang stocks in general in the rise uh, they have risen together and now they're they're starting to top and my question is is when does the fang stock movement start to retrace and recorrect and revalue uh, to more fundamentally sound values and if the 10-year Treasury continues to go up and the 30-year Treasury continues to go up um, how how detrimental is that to our country's economy the bond market is one of those things that people need to pay attention to because it represents so much so much is attached to it you know there are assets that are attached to the the Treasury bonds and to bonds in general and when they move around when yields move around it can cause problems for those who have assets that are attached to those the cost of money is increased in the last month or so by 25 uh, by a quarter a uh, quarter of a percent that hurts and if you're tight on cash and tight on cash flow that hurts even more so what do we do about it what is the Federal Reserve what is what are they capable of doing well they can talk the book and talk you know rates down yields down um, they can go on a buying spree which they're already doing that I believe it's a hundred and twenty billion a month uh, in treasuries and mortgage-backed securities that they're buying um, I believe that's right don't quote me on those numbers but I believe it's they're in them they're doing that but yet Treasury yields are keep going up and because they're going up the cost of money is going to go up so if you're borrowing that kind of thing it's going to slow down uh, housing new housing purchases or existing home purchases because now the cost of a loan is more um, and if you don't have rising assets that counter the cost of that money then you've got a problem if and especially now that with banks tightening up on their lending requirements 
it's another another negative towards you know some economic growth and I think that's what I'm really considering is if we see the 10 year and 30 year continue to climb and we see that yield curve continue to steepen it's great for banks um, but it also has a point where it becomes a negative for the equity markets and if you look at the equity markets today compared to a year ago I mean holy cow all-time highs crazy you know you know my my daughter's boyfriend is now trading options and he's 18 years old and because his buddy started trading options I mean I'm reliving everything I lived in uh, 98 99 it's crazy and I'm looking at that bond market as that leading indicator of one of the leading indicators to what could possibly be a you know a correction or another recession or something of course I'm following the VIX and the VIX still indicates um, you know the VIX you know nine to uh, 12 month you know time frames are continuing to steepen so that's good Equi it's good for equity markets but the move index which is the volatility index for the 10-year Treasury uh, broke over uh, 50 today or yesterday and seems to be going up which indicates volatility in the bond market which you know if there's volatility in the bond market and people are selling their bonds that drives yields up which drives cost of your borrowed money up it I mean it's just all a chain reaction it's it's a point of where how can we stop this and I don't know if you can um, I think we've gotten so far down the road on on rates and you know there's no room to lower interest rates I mean if you go negative like the 10-year the German 10-year boon you all of a sudden are, are taxing the savers you're taxing people who have money in a savings account um, and that's not right I mean that's wrong and it discourages you from saving so you go out and buy assets that can counterbalance that cost of inflation which means you're taking more risk and maybe you get caught up in the euphoria of all this and you're buying Tesla at all-time highs I, I mean this is a really an interesting period of time and this is where I think it it, it, it this is where you need to stop and pause and measure your risk and look at more than just how well the latest electric vehicle stock has done or what have you it's these correlations between bonds and markets US dollars and markets volatility and markets that we have to really measure and dig into so when you wake up in the morning and you start to look at your investment portfolio take a minute and go look at the 10-year Treasury and think about it go look at the 30-year Treasury and think about it go look at the volatility indexes the VIX the VXN the RVX which is the Russell 2000 go look at those and then go look at the level of risk you're taking in your portfolio and check yourself you know the the thing they always tell you on on the plane is know where the exits are this is one of those times where I think it's been really good it could be really good for another period of time who knows what it is but I think you need to know where the exits are and when you've won enough you know what's that saying uh, hogs or pigs or somebody gets slaughtered kind of thing I think this is one of those times where we have to check ourselves so hopefully this has been helpful hopefully I've opened your eyes to something new to think about how to measure and be, become a better investor uh, please hit the subscribe button the notification so you know when I put up a new video but also share this content with friends that you feel would benefit from it I really appreciate you watching the video and if you've gotten this far I super appreciate it so in the meantime have a great day stay safe and stay healthy and of course live loud